Hello everyone and welcome to our daily video devotion called Certain Joy in Uncertain Times as we are working our way through the book of Philippians and finding the certain joy that's only found in Christ here in this wonderful letter of Paul to the Christians at Philippi. Uh, and it's so applicable for our lives today too in our lives of uncertainty in the, in the troubled, difficult, unknown times that we are living in in our world today. To have this certain joy in Christ is, is incredibly powerful and comforting and this is our true source of, of hope and joy. Uh, my name is Aaron Bublitz. I serve as pastor at Heritage Lutheran Church in Gilbert, Arizona. And I am uh, blessed to be able to share God's word with you for just a little while today. We're in Philippians chapter 3, and we're going to read verses 17 through 19 today. Uh, just a reminder of where we at, are at in this section, Paul has said that um, you know, he's, he's looking forward to heaven, uh, that he's longing to attain that, that prize, that, that crown of life that Jesus has waiting for him. He's straining, he's, he's um, straining towards what's ahead, pressing on towards that goal. And then yesterday we heard that he uh, says that those who are mature in faith take such a view of things like this. And, and if it's not clear to you yet, God will make it clear to you as you are in his word. Um, and, and let's live up to what we've already attained. We have all these blessings in Christ. Let's hold on to these. And so here he is in verse 17 through 19. Paul writes, Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. And just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For, I has, for as I have often told you before and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. So here Paul is encouraging uh, the Christians here in Philippi and encouraging us to, to use Paul and the other apostles, the other missionaries, as examples for them. Men who are willing to give up everything for the sake of Christ. Men who are willing to put their lives on the line for the sake of the gospel. Uh, men who have their eyes fixed on heaven and the blessings that await there, not uh, the earthly things here. Um, so use these people as examples and, and think about people in your life. Right? Maybe, maybe it's people that uh, you look up to. Right? Uh, you you, you want to model their mature faith, people that you know, maybe it's a, it's a grandparent, maybe who is already sainted, already in heaven, uh, who is already um, with Jesus, right? And, and you look back and, and you see the faith that they had and that they lived with, that, that God had given to them, God the Holy Spirit, and that they helped, um, that they grew in, uh, that God helped grow throughout their life and how they kept their eyes always fixed on heaven. Or maybe it's Maybe it's someone in your life right now, a friend or, or a family member, or someone that uh, you, you want to use their faith as an example. Use them as an example that that's where I want my faith to be. I want my faith to, to be, um, keep, keep our eyes fixed on, on those who live like that, with their eyes fixed on heaven. And then he warns, and he, and he says, I warn you with tears, right? So it's Paul saying that I, I, I just, I, I care for your souls and I, and I care that you are not being drawn away and, and, and being taken, your eyes aren't being taken off these heavenly things and being put back on, on the earthly things. He says, there are those who many, those that live as enemies of the cross of Christ, that they don't have in mind Jesus Christ alone and, and his work alone. Instead, they're trying to bring in other things. Um, they're trying to, you know, add, like we, we heard a few days ago, right? Uh, those who are coming to those in the church and saying, you know, you got to be circumcised. You got to still obey these Old Testament laws if you really are God's people, right? They're enemies of the cross of Christ, right? They're sending their minds on earthly things, not on the blessings that we ha already have on, in Christ through his cross, through his empty tomb. They're enemies of that cross. And, and he says their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. They're only concerned about themselves. And in this life, their glory is in their shame, right? Their mind is set on earthly things. Paul's warning here, be careful. Out of love for you, I'm saying be careful. I'm saying it with tears for those, of, those who would seek to take you away from Christ. Those who would get you to, to focus on the things of this life again. Uh, and, and let this be a warning to us too. That we are aware of, of false teachings out there. Of, of, of teachings that tell us, yes, Jesus did this for you, but now you also have to do this. Right? That, that's an enemy of the cross of Christ who's, who's speaking those words and they're false and they will draw you away from Jesus. 
and, and they, they focus you on the things of this life and what you do rather than on what is already done for you, that heaven is already yours. Right? Their minds are on earthly things. Right? Keep your eyes focused on the heavenly things that are already yours through Jesus Christ, your Savior, and then use the people around you who are mature in faith as examples, that you strive to have a faith like them as you connect yourself to the means of grace, as you continue to go back to that cross of Christ, back to that empty tomb. And there you recall that it's all grace, it's all done, it's all completed by Christ for you. This is where our hope and our joy is found, in Christ alone, not in earthly things, not in anything we do, but everything that's already been done for us. And then tomorrow, uh, we're going to take, take this just a little farther. Paul's going to dig deeper and, and talk about that our citizenship is in heaven, right? And we set our minds on things that are there. Um, and so we'll, we'll, we'll dive a little deeper tomorrow, but for now, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those around us that are examples of mature faith. Uh, for those that we can look up to, uh, those who have their hearts and their minds set on heavenly things that are focused on the cross of Christ alone for their salvation. Lord Jesus, strengthen our faith through your word. Send your Holy Spirit through your means of grace and uh, give us a faith uh, like these examples that, that of people that we know, of Christians that we know around us, uh, so that we too uh, might let go of these earthly things and hold on to the, to the heavenly things. Uh, and, and give us a, a, a heightened sense of awareness, uh, of, of being able to identify false teaching, uh, those that come to us with, with false ideas that, that, yes, Jesus died for you, but now you have to do this in order for God to love you and forgive you. I, th that is, uh, that's focusing again on earthly things and things that we have to do. Uh, set us back on, on the fact that all is done, all is accomplished for us in Christ. Heaven is already ours uh, and that we can't wait to be there. And until then, you will keep us strong in faith and uh, you will give us hope and certain joy in everything that Jesus has done for us. We pray this all in his saving name. Amen. Thanks for being with us today. Uh, we hope that you can join us again tomorrow as we continue our walk through Philippians. And uh, feel free to share these resources with anyone that you think might be blessed by them. And uh, God's richest blessings on your day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.